you know, I think about the Bible itself. It starts off with a story, right? It says, in the beginning, yeah. God created the heavens and the earth, and it tells the story. Hey, everyone. This is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Talked podcast. I'm back today with my friend, Paul Hastings, and we're talking about testimonies this week. We're talking about all the things that God is doing through so many of his people to impact his kingdom and how God just shows off. Have you noticed that God is a God who likes to just show off? And oftentimes when it seems like he's being silent or quiet, just like we talked in episode one about the story of Hannah Overton and how for seven years she was in prison and it seemed like maybe God was being silent and he didn't hear her cries for help and, and, and the truth was not revealed for such a long time. God was still at work in a big way and he was still using her to impact the lives of literally thousands of women, even today who are still in the prison system, who are being impacted by the testimony that she had and what God did and the work that he did through her many years ago. And so I love talking about these things. So we're going to keep talking about that. But before we jump back in, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, CTC Math. If you guys are looking for a great online math program, go to ctcmath.com. Try them out for free, ctcmath.com. All right, Paul, welcome back to the podcast. I'm so glad to have you back again with me on this beautiful Wednesday. Good to be back. Um, yeah, thank you. So I, I want to share another verse. Like I said, you know, we just digging into scripture and realizing the importance of testimonies and what God is doing. And so Luke 839 is a verse that that jumped out to me um, and Garrett both. And it says this, it's Luke 838 and 39. And it says this, the man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. So this is a man who had demons. Jesus healed him from the demons. And then he tells him, he says, go away, go out and proclaim my goodness to everyone. Go tell the whole city, he says, of what Jesus has done. And that's so important for us to not just keep inside what the Lord has done, but to tell people to share, because it's one of the best ways that we have to share the gospel is not by just saying the Bible says, which that's important, but it's not just the Bible says this, it's this is what God has done in my life because people can't argue with us with our own story, right? I mean, they can't say, no, God didn't do that in your life. God didn't use, you know, other people in that way to impact your life, they they can't argue with our own story. So we can share our own testimonies, but talk to us about the importance of sharing stories and testimonies. Yeah, great question, Yvette. You know, I think about the Bible itself. It starts off with a story, right? It says, in the beginning, yeah. God created the heavens and the earth, and it tells the story. And Genesis is just a, one big story, actually. Uh, Genesis yeah. and then Exodus and so much of the Bible. In fact, if you talk to a little kid and ask them what are their favorite parts of the Bible, well, you know, are they going to start re reciting Psalms or Proverbs? Yeah. No. Instead, they're going to tell you about David and Goliath or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace or Daniel in the lion's den. They're going to tell you these stories because that's what we resonate with, especially even as little children. Uh, I remember as a kid, you know, I would be at Sunday uh, at church and I would be falling asleep in the sermon or drawing or doodling or whatever. But as soon as the pastor started to tell a story and it could have been a Bible story, it could have been him like last yeah. week I was like mowing my grass. And like immediately though, I would always tune in to hear the story. Like what, what's it going to say? What happened next? And it's just something that our brains are hardwired for storytelling. Mm -hmm. That's something that's a powerful tool that we have as Christians is our story or the story of others that we know personally how God has changed or transformed their own life. So that way, when we're challenged about our faith and like, how can that be true? How can that be real? We can always testify and say like, hey, I know it's true because I saw God change my own life or I saw God change this other person's life. And I think, again, go back to the New Testament, right? Like I, the four first gospel, all the four gospels, they all start off with a story. They're all telling the story of Jesus Christ, right? And again, yeah. Jesus, when he's talking to people, what is he telling? He's telling them the stories through the parables. Again, stories are such powerful ways to illustrate what God is doing or how God has transformed someone's life. And so that's why that's why we love making the Compelled Podcast. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. It's so funny because, you know, you look at different subjects that we teach our kids and we could teach history or we could teach science. And science, I think, is absolutely fascinating. 
but not everyone's brain is hardwired to understand all of the details of science, right? Like we can understand it as a whole, but when you then switch over to history, it's a story and we, it's a like just a different part of your brain that can focus and hone in on like, oh, this is actually about real people and something that happened in their lives. And with God's word, it's the same way is that we learn through history. We learn through the Bible, who God is, how he works in people's lives and through people's lives and every attribute of God simply through a story. You know, there are parts of the Bible that say, you know, God is this, God is that. But most often it seems that we learn about his attributes through stories in his word that we know to be true. So let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. What we do at IEW is break through the the noise of the grammar and the writing prompts and we say, this is what you do step by step. And I've witnessed it over and over again, both watching Andrew teach and hearing from parents, this is the best writing program. We've made it so easy and made it really affordable. So any mom can teach writing to their children using our course, and we guarantee it. To try three weeks of free lessons, visit IEW.com. We are back with Paul. So in the first part of this episode, we're talking about stories and the importance of stories. So I would love to hear your story. What is your story, Paul? How did you get saved? How did you come to faith in Christ? Yeah. So, you know, I grew up in a Bible believing household. I mentioned in the previous episode that my parents Mm -hmm. met each other, uh, started homeschooling us. And the cool thing is that, you know, my mom had grown up as a Buddhist. And so when she got married, she was the only Christian in her entire family. She'd gotten saved maybe three years prior and so my dad and I, her decided to have an evangelistic wedding in Thailand. And so they wow. went back to Bangkok. Uh, there's a small province, maybe two hours north of Bangkok, called uh, uh, Supanburi. And so I've been there, actually. I've been to where they got married. I've spent some time there. And so they just went to this little village that my mom had come from. And my dad is six foot six. And so he looks like a giant, you know, uh, wow. amongst the people in Thailand. And so it was this huge deal. Because like also, he had probably like the first white guy that showed up in their town that year. And so they had this wedding and the entire village comes to the wedding. Like they, no one was invited. Just people just show up because they wanted to see the white guy. And so they have this evangelistic <laughs> wedding and like no one comes to faith or anything like that. But they have this evangelistic wedding. You know, the gospel is preached and proclaimed. And then afterwards, that's it. My mom and dad, they go on their honeymoon. They get back to my mom's hometown again to leave. This is their last day in Thailand. And at the time, my grandmother was also a Buddhist. And so she was preparing a meal for one of the holy festivals that day in Thailand. And my mom had been sharing the gospel with her for like the last couple months when they had been in Thailand, you know, like, hey, I'm getting married, but like, I wanted you to know about Jesus. And her mom had just kind of been pushing her off, pushing her off, pushing her off. And so finally, this is the last day my parents are there. And my mom is just sharing the gospel one last time with my grandmother. And my mom's point, she says, you know, you know, she says, you know, you realize that after you, you know, offer this food, at the festival, it's going to sit in this bowl at the temple, and the food is going to rot. God is not going to come down from heaven. Buddha is not going to come down from heaven and consume this. It's just going to rot, and animals and decay and random stuff, you know, whatever. It's just going to molt. And for whatever reason, just like this, I don't know, whatever it was, my grandma is like, huh, that's, that's interesting. And right there, she 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 prays a prayer of salvation with my mom. She says, well, I, I believe that this Jesus guy you talk about, he obviously has changed your life. I want him to change my life too. And wow. so my, my mom's like, wow, this is great. And it's also like, oh my goodness, but we're flying back to America like tomorrow. And this is back in like the 80s, right? So like this is before like cell phones and communication, the internet, anything, right? And, and this is like a yeah. real part of town. And so they leave, right? And my mom and my dad, they're very like, oh no, you know, like, is, you know, is, is this real? Is this a real conversion? Like, we don't know because we're not we're around to find out. And so they leave. And so, like, you know, they try to put my grandmother into contact with other Christians, but you don't really know what's going on because, like, you know, again, communication is just like, you know, crazy around the other side of the world. And so, but then, then these rumors from my, my mom's other siblings, these rumors start coming out of Thailand. Because my mom's got 10 siblings. I think 12 siblings, oh, wow. actually. And <laughs> these rumors start coming back as like one sibling would come back to the U- would come to the U.S. and visit my mom and would just like offhandedly mention like, man, you would not believe Ama. That was her name. 
you would not believe Ama. Like, she is crazy. Something's happened to her. Like, she used to be so angry and violent. Wow. And now there's this, she keeps on talking about this Christian God. You know, what did you do? You know? And this just goes <laughs> on and on and on. And so finally, you know, 30 years later, I had the chance to meet my grandmother. And I, I flew to Thailand in 2000. Uh, what was that? 2011, I think it was. And I, I had gotten saved when I was six years old, right? I had a very normal okay. kind of growing up experience. But going over there to see my grandmother in 2011, I was 21. And I go and I spend uh, 40 days in Thailand with a whole bunch of relatives and a good portion of that with my grandmother, right? And I only spoke like, I don't know, 20 words in Thai. And she spoke oh, like wow. five words of English. But every morning, every morning, she'd be down inside her little like hovel, you know, where she lived. And she'd be reading her Thai Bible every morning. And so I would go and sit down with her too. And like, you know, even though we couldn't really like speak with each other, like I'd hold her hand. I think we would pray a few times, you know, like she'd be praying in Thai. I'd pray in English. And then I'd go to church with her also, right? And the, the service was in Thai, but like we're still singing the same, God, same songs to the same God in a completely different language. And it was just wow. so surreal. And so that was one of the moments for, for me where it's like, I was like, wow, this is, this is just such a powerful moment. So even though that's not my salvation testimony, that was a testimony of where I saw God at work in not only my family's life, but also to encourage my own life too. Yeah, that's incredible. And it just shows that God is the same here in America as he is in Thailand. God is God is God. You know, it doesn't matter where he is or where you are. He's everywhere. He's the same God. And he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He is God. So that is an incredible testimony. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Education is discipleship. And this is something I didn't understand until I was probably three years into homeschooling. The Bible teaches us in Luke 640 that when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. And as we look around the culture right now, uh, I think it begs the question, who is teaching our children? Who is teaching our children? And what are they teaching our children? And to me, the benefit, the primary benefit of having my children home with me is I am able to impart my worldview to my children. We are back with Paul. That is such an incredible testimony of your mom and your dad and your grandmother and how the Lord used them, used your parents to impact the lives of your grandmother. And so many years later that she was still walking with Christ. Um, and so, you know, one thing you and I were talking about before we jumped on the podcast was how no testimony is too small. No testimony is too lame. And I think oftentimes we feel that, well, we, we don't have anything exciting to share. You know, we're not an evangelist. We're, you know, we don't have an amazing transformation story because a lot of the stories that we hear on Compelled really are incredible. I mean, they're people who went from, you know, an abusive home or they were an alcoholic or, you know, they were, they had some crazy story and God just sweeps in and completely changes their whole life. And, and those are amazing. But at the same time, our testimony doesn't have to be huge to be impactful and effective. Talk about that for a little bit. Yeah. So one thing I would say to that for anyone who feels like, oh, you know, like, uh, it's just embarrassing to talk about my testimony. Cause like, you know, what is it? You know, it's just, it's just very normal, right? Like mine yeah. super normal, right? I was six years old, got convicted about like, oh, am I going to go to hell someday? Like, I don't want that to happen. Right. And so I went, you know, one day to my dad and said, I don't want to go to hell. Don't want to be separated. And really like, you know, my testimony was not like, oh, I love God so much. It was more like, oh, I don't want to go to hell. I was just afraid of going yeah. to hell. You know, it was, it was fear. And then maybe maybe six years later then, uh, I then went to a Wana camp. I was 12 years old, first time separated from my family. I went to Wana camp for a whole week. I loved it. It was awesome. But there I saw all these other kids that were like, you know, having their own daily devotions. We had a chapel every morning, chapel every evening, chapel in the midday, and just all the talks that were going on. And I realized that suddenly I was like, huh, you know, Am I a Christian because is this my own faith or is this my parents' faith? And for me, that was a transformative epiphany moment where I was like, I think this has to be my own faith. I have to choose this. Is this real or not? You know? And so whether I was saved at 12 or saved at 12, at 12 or at 6, you know, God knows that. But I know where I am today, and it's been a gradual progression ever since. Well, you know, when I say that testimony right now, like, okay, well, that's like, that's pretty normal, right? That's not like this, like, oh my goodness, Paul was a drug dealer. And then, you know, didn't happen that way. But, you know, I, I'm proud of what God's done in my life. And when I say proud, yeah. I hope that's in a, in a not you know, like prideful sense. Not a like, prideful, I'm, yeah. I'm just happy. I'm, I'm so happy about that. One of our guests that we had on, he had a, a terrible traumatic upbringing and he had been abused and misused and molested as a child. And 
He told his story, his testimony, very powerful how God transformed his life. But at the end, he also mentioned, he said like, hey, you know, people come up to me and they're like ashamed of their testimony or they just belittle their own. How... And he's like, hold on a minute. I wish my testimony was yours. I mm -hmm. wish that I had never gone through the things that I went through. I wish, I would never wish that upon anyone else. I hope that my children and my children's children, I hope that they have your testimony, that they grew up in a household that loved the Lord, they came to faith at an early age, they never strayed away, and they had died serving the Lord. That's the testimony I want my family to have, and I wish I had that one too. And I, yeah. I and that's the one I hope my kids have. You know, and so like I would yeah. just say like that's awesome how God can preserve a family and preserve someone, you know, without letting them like fall astray into uh, you know other crazy things. So yeah, let me just encourage folks that are listening and just say like, hey, let's all pray that the Lord keeps us in His hand and that we don't stray away. Right. And we all have things, you know, there's, I, I was talking to a good friend of mine yesterday and we were talking about family drama. And I said, every family has drama, literally every single family, even the Royal family, like no one escapes it. Every single family has drama. Every single person, every human, whether you're a believer or not, every person has some sort of hardship in their life at some point. Now there are seasons of our life where things are just going smoothly and it seems like everything is working out the way we want it to. But there are always going to be seasons where things are not going the way that we want them to. And that's when we have to cling to the Lord and, and trust that he's at work even during those times. And so I think hearing the testimonies of people who have, you know, crazy radical testimonies or hearing those of those who God has just, you know, worked in their lives, but maybe it's been a little more quiet and they've had a little bit easier of a road it's still, it, it doesn't matter. God is still at work no matter what. And so we always have to recognize where he's working, what he's doing and how he's using other people in our lives, right? To impact even our own lives. Um, and so, yeah, I, I agree. There, there's no story that's too small because you never know what your story is going to become. And so no, no story is too small or insignificant to share the goodness of God and what he's done in your life. So that's awesome. Well, we're out of time. We're going to be back tomorrow. We're going to talk more about testimonies. We're going to actually get to share a clip from the Compelled podcast. You guys are going to love it and be so encouraged by that. So we will be back tomorrow to share that. Paul, where can people find out more about you again? You can search for Compelled on your favorite podcast app, or you can go to compelledpodcast.com. Okay, great. We will put those links in the show notes. If you guys haven't seen the movie Schoolhouse Rocked, The Homeschool Revolution, go to our website, schoolhouserocked.com. You can purchase it on DVD. You can stream it, share it with your friends. And let me encourage you to do something. Get two copies of it, or if you're going to get the DVD, get two copies of it and give one to a friend. We made this movie so that you would have a tool to be able to use to go out to your friends and your family members and answer all of the questions that they have about home education. So you get equipped with the encouragement that you need and then pass that on to someone else and keep a copy for yourself and pass one on to someone else so that they can get that same encouragement as well or purchase the streaming for them so that they can see it and invite them over to your house for goodness sake. Bake some cookies or make some cookie dough and don't bake the cookies, but just eat the cookie dough because you know that's the better way to do it and invite them over and watch the movie with them. That is the best thing that you can do. And that is part of people's testimonies as well. We hear testimony after testimony after testimony about what God is doing through the Schoolhouse Rocked movie and through the podcast as well. So we hope that this ministry continues to be a blessing to you. So if you've not seen the movie, go to the website, schoolhouserocked.com. Thank you so much for being with us. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye. Over the past six years, you, the Christian homeschool community, have provided generous support to the Schoolhouse Rocked ministry, and it's had an enormous impact for the kingdom of God. Recently, we've spent some time taking inventory of what's been accomplished in this time because of your generous support. As you know, Schoolhouse Rocked, The Homeschool Revolution, the feature-length documentary, was released in November and is now available on DVD and streaming. We've had the privilege of showing the movie at conferences, churches, theaters, and homeschool events. And we've been blessed to hear the testimonies of how God is using it to impact families around the world. This show, The Schoolhouse Rocked Podcast, is in its fifth season with over 485 episodes and well over a million downloads and video views so far. 
We also launched the Homeschool Insights Podcast this year. This daily podcast provides biblical homeschool encouragement in under 10 minutes for moms on the move. And to date, we've published over 130 episodes. We also offer the free Homeschool Survival Kit, a 70-page resource to assist and encourage homeschooling families. And we continue to offer access to the Homegrown Generation Family Expo. Now, we are in the early stages of work on a new movie, and we need your help. While we can't give many details yet, we expect this new film to have a huge impact in our culture. But projects like this simply can't be done without massive support from the community. So we're asking you to join in this important work. Visit schoolhouserocked.com support and make a one-time or monthly donation that will change lives and hearts for eternity. That's schoolhouserocked.com support.